2021 is finally here, Rich, and you know what that means? What does that mean, John? It is time to get some upgrades for our home lab. Yes, sir. <sighs> Move over, big boy. Welcome, Superboy. Super you get it, John? It's a super micro server. In August 2019, we introduced Big Boy to you as our new platform for our virtual infrastructure that run our channel. Big Boy currently runs all the virtual machines we use to store, make, and upload videos to YouTube. We have a virtual machine for the firewall to protect our network, a virtual machine for shipping data between the studio where we shoot the video, then to my place where the editing is done. Our Dell Precision T7600 has been a dedicated and reliable workhorse the entire time, but sadly, it's time to move up and on. Our two Xeon E5-2680 CPUs are reaching the end of their effective supported lifespan for VMware ESXi, and it's time to upgrade. So, new year and new gear. It is time to upgrade the physical infrastructure with the new four post rack along with our new host. But before we get through what we're gonna replace Big Boy with, let's talk about our requirements. Again, to best plan out the hardware choice, we need to start with defining our needs. First, our new host needs to have enough CPU, RAM, and disk storage to run upwards of 20 or more VMs, containers, and more, and have future space for adding cards. Next, we need to be able to take advantage of older components we already own. This includes compatible SSDs and mechanical hard disks, including some of the storage devices from Big Boy. Third, the hardware inside must have some future proofing left in it. Because VMware is our virtualization platform of choice, we want to make sure that the procs inside will be supported for at least a few versions released in the future. And last, it needs to be reasonably quiet. Big Boy was a massive improvement over the previous host we had, and we'd like to continue that moving forward. Okay, John, should we show them what we chose for our base chassis? Let's do it. Scouring over eBay, we decided it was time to go back to a rack server over our workstation form factor. After searching, we came across a Supermicro CSC 829U X10DRU. With 12 3.5 inch drives up front, this beast packs 14 core E5 2680 V4 CPUs running at 2.4 gigahertz. The fact that this box has 28 total cores means we'll have plenty of space compute in this beast for years to come. This server also includes four dedicated 10 gigabit based TNICs, a dedicated integrated light saw interface, and enough RAM and PCIe slots for our needs. Delivered to our door, the host cost us a cool 619 USD, worth every penny. All that power aside, however, this server is a bare bones chassis. So outside of those badass CPUs, bare 3.5 inch drive trays, and dual 800 watt power supplies, we are still lacking RAM, storage, and a storage controller for our future disks. So our next task was to secure our storage and storage controller. So back to eBay we went to find a 12 gigabit SAS capable RAID card to handle the 12 base SAS cage up front. We settled on a Dell H730 1 gigabyte 12 gigabits a second PCI Express RAID controller. Having worked on many a Dell R730 hosts in the past, I knew this card was the right fit for our server, and with its one gigabyte battery-backed write-back cache, I know it'll serve us well. We picked up this card for $155, which is a pricey piece of gear, but very much worth it. It was a compromise between this card and the two gigabyte cache card version for $100 more, and that felt too steep for us for this build. For large capacity, we're using a few mechanical hard disks we've had lying around the studio. We'll be using a pair of 6TB Enterprise SAS disks, a pair of 14TB Western Digital Drives we picked up for an absolute steal on Black Friday from Best Buy, and a pair of Samsung 861TB EVO SATA SSDs. In addition to the traditional SATA SAS disks, I also wanted super fast NVMe storage for the VMs that require the fastest access to disks. So I headed to Amazon to pick up a Glowtrends M.2 PCI Express NVMe adapter card and a Samsung EVO 971 terabyte NVMe SSD. The adapter card was 13 bucks and the SSD was 130. The NVMe is natively supported by ESXi and will act as our tier one storage. On to RAM. Unfortunately, since these CPUs are modern, we're out of luck on using our old DDR3 ECC memory that currently resides in Big Boy. So once again, we headed back to the Ebays for some RAM. This time we settled on four sticks of Samsung 16 gigabyte ECC PC4 2133P DDR4 memory for a grand total of 64 gigabytes. This server has room for an absolutely absurd amount of RAM and the four sticks we purchased look anemic inside this host. But on the flip side, we have plenty of room to add RAM in the future as our needs increase and the cost of ECC DDR4 drops down. Four sticks cost us 160 USD. Okay, let's get all of that gear into this host and get it booted up. You ready, John? Let's do it.
If you remember from earlier, one of our big requirements was that this system needed to be as quiet as possible. Being as this is a server and not a workstation like Big Boy, we need to do something about the noise as rack servers always have high RPM fans. We reached out to our friends at Noctua and they were kind enough to send us four 80mm NF-A8 PWM fans. These awesome little fans have a max RPM of 2200, which isn't the same max speed as the fans already in the server now, but they will do just fine. And most importantly, they're going to be so much more quiet. But obviously, this case wasn't designed to fit a standard 80mm fan, so off to Tinkercad where we're going to design a mount to allow us to fit the standard 80mm into the space as one of these larger NEDEX that came with it. Let's get to it. Here's the simple design I came up with to mount the 80mm fans into this Supermicro 2U case. This mount will work with any standard 80mm fans, and we've put a link in the description to download the STL if you're looking to swap out your loud fans for something else instead. Now let's print these up and install them into our server. time to fire up the system. Make sure everything is healthy, functional, and begin installing the ESXi hypervisor. We'll be installing ESXi onto a bootable USB stick that plugs directly into a port on the motherboard. You can download the ESXi hypervisor for free from VMware. Just create an account and download ESXi. We'll put a link in the description below where you can get a copy of it. Our host doesn't have a CD-ROM drive, so we're going to use a tool called Rufus to write that ISO to a bootable USB to install ESXi onto our internal USB stick inside the host. Now we insert our target disk into the internal USB port on the host, insert the install USB stick in the back, start the host up, and boot off the install USB stick and begin installing ESXi. We'll just follow the prompts of the installation and target the internal USB stick as our installation location. Once the installation is completed, reboot the host and you're ready to get working with your VMs. Once you reboot the system, set the root password and get it on our LAN, then we'll set up our data stores as we defined and move our running VMs from our old host to the new one. Now that everything is up and running, we need to build our four post server rack and get the server racked up, cabled, and ready to go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to do it for our video today. John and I generally hope you enjoyed watching as much as we enjoyed making it. And we'd love to know what you think of the video. Did we miss out on anything? Do you want to see more? Do you want to see what we do with this thing? Get down those comments and let us know. If this is the first time you've seen us, please consider subscribing because it really helps us out and keeps us making these videos. We've got a website right here. We put all the results for our testing of our other videos, fans and whatnot. Go there. Obviously, no testing in this one. We have a Twitter and Instagram, so go there and follow us. And last but not least, we have a Discord server. We'd love to have you join. Talk about servers, talk about computers, fans, heat sinks, whatever you want. We'd love to talk with you, so consider joining us. Thank you for watching, and we will see you again soon.